Hey guys, it's Ryan Potter from Nickelodeon Super Ninjas, and you're on OceanUp.com. Nobody else, don't want nobody else. He's special, I know. Uh, we just finished 26 episodes about a month ago. It was an <laughs> it was an amazing experience for me. Um, but you know, you're you're always glad to kind of finish and then go on do a little few other projects, have a little time to rest, and then hopefully start back up. Yeah, the episode Ishina, um, it's it's our hour-long special, it's going to be probably the biggest episode we've had yet, and um, it's really the turning point for the ninjas because um, it, it tells you how, like, it tells you a lot about Mike's destiny, grandpa, uh, yeah, grandfather's past, and um, there's a new clan of ninjas that's somehow related to the Fukunaga clan, and um, they're rivals, the rivals. So um, you see how that plays out. Of course, I mean, I think the biggest acting advice he gives me is um, make sure you show up on time, have your lines down, and brush your teeth every morning. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, a lot of indoor stuff. We do a few outdoor things, but um, I think my favorite set we've done was a check the checkmate set, the giant chessboard. Because, I mean, it looks like we had this huge, like, thing raised up over the city, but it was really just this, like, 30, you know, like, 40 by 40 foot, like, giant chessboard with green screen all around it. So that was, that was a trip. Oh, yeah, that was, that was kind of crazy. Um, we did it in one of the stages on Paramount. And um, our art director spent, like, an entire week getting his crew together and putting this thing together. It was it was an enormous project because not only was it the 40 by 40, it was it was raised off the ground a good like 10, 15 feet. So uh, it was so much, they put so much work into it because a lot of the tiles moved and you had all the chess pieces that moved on it. So you had to make sure it was like all flat and some of the pieces gave way so like things fall through. So that was crazy. Give me the green light, kiss my lips, who's that? I think Ashina was definitely the best episode that we did. Um, and my favorite because it's of all the action we had, but also I like the turn them because the director on the turn them was really hands on with all the action. So when we when we were rehearsing for a fight scene, he would remember some of the fights and he would actually go in and be like, you know what? Actually, I want this change, and he would do the fight. And I'm like, this is the first director I've seen that does this. This is cra so th that was a crazy episode. The turn and the fighting was great. We got to do a lot of it. So. I've been doing uh, White Tiger Kung Fu for eight years. Um, I love it. It's it's been the best martial art I've done. Cause I've done a few other martial arts, but I haven't really liked any of them quite as much as this one. And um, you know, when we when we whenever there's like a fight or a stunt or something, they always have to make sure it's okay if it's safe. And um, if it's safe, you know, the fight choreographer, the stunt director, they always make sure you know we're comfortable doing it. And if we are, everything's green-lighted, they teach us how, and we get to do it. So I would say it's it's like, it's not 50-50, because we get to do a lot of the fight stuff, but some of the big stunt stuff where we're jumping, like, you know, across the room, getting thrown into stuff, those are our stunt doubles. So I would say, like, I don't know, 60-40? like four stunt doubles and all of them rotate through because they're, they're constantly working. Um, the funny thing is the one that looks most like me uh, is always busy so they can never get him. He did, um, he was on Checkmate um, and so so in that one I'm always like oh yeah I did all that because fa like face wise and like body wise we look exactly the same but you know my regular stunt doubles uh, Steve and Jake. The funny thing is Steve um, he has like the same facial features, but he has these massive calves because he's because he, he does the tricking and like dancing. So you know he if to get like 15 feet or 10 feet in the air, he's gotta have these like massive calves. And Jake, um, we're we're facially different, but our bodies are more similar. So um, Chris, the one on Checkmate, was like the exact match. And you just keep going down. I mean, everyone's like, oh. Hey, I'm cool. I'm cool. I mean, even Mike says that. I'm pretty sure everyone's like, oh yeah, I'm so cool. But, I mean, there's always parts of us that are really dorky. I mean, I, 
there are some there are some things I still love from my childhood. Um, like I I still love Power Rangers. I'm not crazy about it, but you know Godzilla, Ultraman, all these like Japanese kind of relics in my past. Um, I still love, and I'm kind of geek out about. Um, you know. Before, before kind of this whole auditioning process and getting the part, I was a little shy. But now, you know, working, working with these people and working with directors, actors, and all these, you know, people that have really encouraging things to say, um, really built, you know, has built my self-esteem, and I'm a little bit more brave and outgoing. Um, jumping kicks are always fun, and I think the most difficult thing are the ones you have to remember, just like. Like the slightest move, you have to like move this thumb and then raise the wrist and move it. I, I hate the ones that get so tedious because you have to remember everything. I just want to do something simple and effective. I don't want to have to like, oh, drag the pinky this way while moving the elbow that way. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> really it definitely comes in handy when you want to um, scare the cats. Uh, <laughs> Because the cats, my cats are so ridiculous. They, they'll think sometimes I'm, I'm like a piece of meat, and they'll like they'll just chase me and claw me and attack me. I'm like, what are you doing? I feed you. you so you know you gotta act really silly and act like you're powerful in front of the cats to try and scare them away. So I think that's my practical use. I've never had to actually been in a fight, so that's good. <laughs> I, I mean, that's right on. Saturday in the morning, woke up, 7 a.m., you know, switched to whatever channel, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Pokemon, Power Rangers, and I, you know, get my breakfast, and you know what? Nope, nothing's going on for the next two hours. Th this is what's going on. <laughs> no fear is what it really was. Um, a lot of the times when we, when we work with um, the CGI and the, the, like, the little screens we have in the dojo that pop up and we use... Um, they'll bring like a reference, they call them a reference flag, and basically it's a see-through kind of mesh screen they put up, and then when they start filming they take it away, but you kind of have the reference where it was. But you know, working on, working with green screen and CGI, it's really difficult because what, you know, what the digital effect artists, what your, what your vision and what the director's vision, it's all, it's all different, you know, you're not thinking the exact same thing, so you can't always imagine, you know, what everyone else is imagining. So you always kind of have to work together and act like you know what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I see that screen right there on that one too. Psh, we all see it, right? And it's like, well, in reality, there's nothing there. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, I, I I like acting, but my big goal in life is, you know, to become a successful director because I I'm. I can definitely be really kind of overbearing and kind of a control freak when it comes to things, but results, the results are always good, <laughs> and my friends don't always hate me, like if we're playing a video game and I'm like, do this quick, get, get out of there, buy this, I, you know, and we're all, and I'm like spazzing out, you know, we, we win, but everyone's like, Ryan's like, just Ryan, be quiet, we, we can do this, and it's like, sorry guys, just want to win, so I, I can definitely be little kind of a control freak so that's why directing I would you know I definitely want to be a director um, I'm always being creative I'm always coming up with new things um, I would like to write but I think I'd rather come up with ideas and have someone else write um, I don't know if I could write you know like all the dialogue and all the scenes and all the descriptions um, I could definitely come up with ideas though <laughs> I mean I think the Hunger Games is everyone. What everyone's been talking about. I, you know, I love the Hunger Games. The, the book was amazing. I read Burning Fire and then Mockingbird. Those are the last two books. Those were really good. Um, I mean, so I, I'd love to be in those, direct those. But uh, I, there's another book that a lot of people haven't read, and it's called The Monstrumologist. It's this awesome book about um, this. It's kind of crazy, like. Frankenstein scientist in a way, and and his assistant that um that kind of find like weird like creatures and like monsters throughout like Northern America, and they they have to like keep it hidden from the news. It's it's really cool. 
right now I'm we're in the works of starting a toy drive. It's called um, a Toy Box of Hope, and right now we're just focusing on you know just getting collections and um, raising awareness that these all these toys are going to go towards um, homeless children and uh, children in need of you know just some some joy on you know on the holidays for underprivileged children and children you know who've lost their families. Um, so that's that's really important to me. So what I want to do is. Um, you know, get the whole the whole community together. Um, get a couple boxes out and just you know drop off a toy, and we're gonna start working. Um, I'm gonna get some of the uh, some other you know like teen stars involved in their involvement and say, hey, you know, we're we're all here together. You guys come out, come out and meet us. Bring a toy. Um, so just any way we can get a toy to a kid in need. I'm gonna give it like it's never been. Um, ramen. I could eat ramen. No, actually, rice. <laughs> I can eat rice 24-7 for the rest of my life and I would never get bored of it. Um, Emily Deschanel. Yep, I'm gonna have to go with Emily. Famous person I've ever met. Oh man, that's always hard because it's... It's hard to judge who's more famous than the other people, but um, I think when when people think, oh, really famous, it's it comes to like Brad Pitt and like Angelina Jolie, and I met them at the Kung Fu Panda premiere, and that was really cool. So I guess then. I definitely think um, Justin Bieber is pr probably the most famous person on earth right now. I. I, I just because every, I, almost every country knows him, you know, and all the girls are freaking out. And I, I think the response from the guy is, oh, he's lame, he's that. I don't, I don't think that at all. It's just that he, he's, he, he's on top of the game. We can't get any ladies because of this guy. I mean, it's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm waiting for Justin Bieber. It's like, what? What? Uh, okay. So, you know, I think he's really talented, but I, I, I'm going to have to say... He's stealing all the ladies, so I can't I can't like him for that. But I like him for his talent. Broken, broken, broken. Is is the chocolate covered scorpion? Um, uh, it was really weird. Uh, one of uh, like I think two Halloweens ago, um, this house was doing this like buffet of like random weird like candy and sweets from different countries, and then there was this one. There was like a like a tray of like chocolate covered scorpions, and I'm like. Are, are you kidding me? This, really? That house is giving out like Kit Kats, and you're giving out chocolate covered scorpions. Props for props for for finding something interesting, but I don't know if anyone's gonna eat that. <laughs> of course, um, I love zombie movies. I'm always like, you know, anything zombie, zombie video games, zombie web episodes, whatever. I'm always into, but um, I think. My favorite Halloween movie is either The Exorcist, which is which is so creepy, which I love. I know his smile, it glows. He's perfect. It shows. Um, I think I think that's kind of how it keeps us grounded. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, Hollywood, it's it's so marvelous and all these stars." To a certain degree, you know, the the events those are amazing. You know, I'm always so excited to go to them and see who's there. I get starstruck, but, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And it's, a television show doesn't just make itself instantly. You know, it takes, cer certain certain shows take two to three weeks. Some shows take a week, some shows take, you know, two days. Um, our show takes about a week, and it, but it's, you know, week in, week out. It's a lot of work that we, you know, that goes into it. And um, just kind of being reminded by our parents and you know my role models that you know hey, you know you're not you're not like you're not this super famous person yet you know you gotta just just chill out and you know keep working work for it if you really want to be you know like Brad Pitt but um, you know like everyone's just telling you just just chill out <laughs> really. Famous. I could sing a 